in this video what I want to do is explain how we're going to be able to get these top marks when we're looking at the short answer questions for A-level politics for AQA and effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the assessment objectives that A-level politics in general want you to um, be focusing on and then I'm going to explain and look at a good a few examples of how we're going to maximize and get an A star every single time we answer a nine mark question. And we're going to do this for every single um, type of question in a separate video because we're really going to start to analyze all of these in great detail. So we're going to begin by looking at the structure of the politics exam. We're going to look at the assessment objectives okay and then we're going to look at how we answer these nine mark questions because they really do contribute even though they're very small answer questions they contribute as you know they're just free marks that you can effectively get if you know what you're doing so what does the politics exam actually look like so there are three nine mark questions uh, you have to answer all three there's one 25 mark extract question you just have to answer that one question and then you get a choice between um, two potential 25 mark essay debate type questions so you answer one of those two and that means the total marks is 77 and we're going to look at all of these different types of questions in, e in, in separate videos we're going to talk about in this video the nine mark question how we tackle that in the next we're going to talk about the extract question and in the final one, we're going to talk about the essay questions and then we're going to do all of this for uh, the edXL specification as well just so we're covering everything that we could possibly need um, and there's also I should note there's a slight difference when it comes to the structure of the exam when we look at the political ideas paper because whereas in the normal uh, comparative and UK politics papers you have two 25 mark essay questions and you get to answer one of them with the political ideas paper you have a, a select list of all the different ideologies so there'll be a question on feminism a fe question on anarchism a question on ecoism you know nationalism all these things and you pick the one that you um a the one that you studied and b you know the one that you're most familiar with so what are the assessment objectives in general so there are three main assessment objectives that we're going to look at so the first one is to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of political institutions, processes, concepts, theories and issues. OK, so this is your knowledge. Um, uh, this is your knowledge assessment objective. This is the this is the, the, the amount of detail you you are able to go into the amount of up to date, relevant, um, sometimes niche examples that you can that you can, you know, bring in and put into your essays um, to, to, to make them you know really detailed and show that the examiner or show your teachers if they're marking the question um, if to show them that you know what you're talking about you have good knowledge and understanding the second assessment objective is for you to be able to analyze aspects of politics and political information including in relation to parallels collect connections similarities and differences so not only do you have to um, not only be able to describe and just you know um, be able to produce information and knowledge as you can in AO1 but you also have to explain um, why that that knowledge that you're using is relevant and explain how the similarities and differences are between um, different things between different pieces of knowledge and between different pieces of information and you know this is very important when we're talking about the comparative politics section it's all well and good being able to um, give a lot of AO1 knowledge, give a lot of knowledge about, say, the you know, Parliament, and then give a lot of knowledge between that, and then give a lot of knowledge of Congress. But then your AO2 is to analyze, explain why they're different, look at the similarities and differences between the two systems. That's a very good, um, so a good habit to get into. The third assessment objective is to evaluate aspects of politics and political information, to be able to construct arguments and make substantiated judgments and draw conclusions. Okay, now this isn't actually uh, relevant for the nine mark questions, the AO3 um, responses, but that's these are going to be uh, the the third assessment objective is going to be very important when we talk about the extract and the essay question. It's your ability to use the information and the knowledge you have and be able to a um, you know produce that knowledge to then b be able to explain it linking it to the question explain the similarities and differences and then c the third thing is to evaluate that 
and to explain um, why the information you're using um, supports your argument that you're making in your essay or it, if it you know debunks your argument to explain and uh, to evaluate and to critically assess the information and the and, and the different political ideas we're going to talk a lot more about that in the next two videos but for now we're going to focus on the first two because we're going to be talking about the short answer questions and again these are just uh, if you can you know if you follow this video you follow the the structure that um, I'm going to show you and if you follow the the techniques and understandings that I'm going to show you you'll be able to get the level three answers every single time so they'll usually ex ask you to explain and analyze a particular thing so every single question I've seen so far um, for the short answer questions almost every single one of them have been in the form of explain and analyze okay and this means that you're using your AO1 and your AO2 skills you're asked to use examples and you're asked to give knowledge and detail and explain things and it means that you're not trying to write an essay where you have a, a single introduction um, you know with the, the where you um, show your argument, you then go on to prove your argument is successful throughout the rest of the essay, then you have a big old conclusion. You're not trying to do that. That's not what we're doing with the nine mark questions. We do that with the essay questions and the extract questions, but not necessarily with the nine mark questions. So this is the mark scheme um, level three for the nine mark questions. This gives you anywhere between seven out of nine and nine out of nine. I'm not even going to bother looking anything lower than that because we're trying to get these top marks. So we're not even going to look at level two, level one. We're going to look at level three. And it's giving you three different points that we need to look at. Two of them are AO1 related, the other one is AO2 related. So the first one detailed knowledge of rele uh, relevant political concepts, institutions, and processes is demonstrated and appropriate political vocabulary is used. Okay, so you need to have knowledge of a pol of the particular issue in question. You need to have knowledge of the political vocabulary. Use the right key words and key phrases and key concepts, and you need to be able to have a detailed knowledge of that. Okay, you can't just um, have a quite you know have very little knowledge. You need to have quite a lot of detailed knowledge of relevant political concepts. The second one thorough explanations and appropriate selection of accurate supporting examples to demonstrate detailed understanding of relevant political concepts institutions and processes so again you need to demonstrate that you that you understand what you're explaining by using good examples okay it's a brilliant way to demonstrate to show your teacher or show an examiner that you know um, what the question is asking you and you know what the information you are using you understand it because you are using examples that are relevant to that thing okay if for example i was to explain uh, some uh, explain how pressure groups influence um, political parties that's that's to say that's the nine mark question okay and i'm asked and i and i write down one of the one of the explanations but then i use a, an example that is completely irrelevant to that explanation then that implies to your teacher and to the examiner that you might not actually understand um, what your uh, the knowledge that you are um, that you that you are presenting in that question so using examples that are relevant is really really important and then the third point is to analyze uh, analysis of three clear points Okay, so that's important. You're going to be asked for three clear points. You're going to be asked for three different um, points. And every single question I've seen so far as well will ask you to explain and analyse three different things. And these points have to be structured. They have to be clearly focused on the question. Okay, and they have to be confidently developed into a coherent answer. So what we're doing is you'll need to make your, cl your points clear. You need to make it very well structured, okay? And then you need to actually make sure that you are actually answering the question. That's something that, you know, it's it's not always, um, it's easier said than done to say you're answering the question. I've written master's level essays, uh, you know, uh, undergraduate and postgraduate level essays that don't answer the question because it's not always easy to do so, okay? You need to make sure that what you're writing is answering the question and I'm going to explain that in in a minute so let's look at an example so we have the example here from I believe the sample set 
on the AQA, uh, explain and analyse the significance of three sources of the British Constitution. This is a nice question. We all like the British Constitution, especially the sources of the British Constitution. And remember, if we're looking at this example, you need three sources, okay? Three points, three different sources of the British Constitution. Now, I can think of about five or six that you, that is often taught. You need to explain what those three sources are, explain what the source is, okay? You need to give examples to support your knowledge and explanation, okay? And then you need to analyze their significance. You need to explain why they're significant. And you can use your examples to explain why they're significant. And like I mentioned uh, earlier, if, for example, I was to explain and give an exa uh, explain um, statute law, you know, uh, statute law is a source of the constitution that is, um, you know, that is the developed through parliamentary statutes and parliamentary legislation. If I then go on to give an example of a constitutional convention, something that is completely different, then that shows to the teacher and to the examiner that I probably don't actually understand what what the the, the difference between the two are. I need to give a specific example of a statute and of, of a piece of legislation, i.e. The, the Constitutional Reform Act or even the, the 2020 Withdrawal Act. Okay, so here's one possible paragraph that we could look at. So this is one that I just wrote up very, very quickly. You know, it, it might not be perfect, but it gives a good example of the, of the things we're going to be talking about. So the first source of significance of the UK Constitution is that of common law. The common law is a body of law which is developed through the decisions and precedent of the court system. The common law is significant since the judiciary has the power to interpret the decisions of other institutions such as the government and or parliament. This has constitutional significance. Uh, for example, in 2017, the UK Supreme Court ruled in Miller 1 that the government did not have the authority to trigger Article 50 and begin the constitutional process of formally leaving the European Union without the consent of Parliament by way of majority vote. Moreover, the common law has since proved its significance as a source of the Constitution in 2019 Miller 2 case, where the Supreme Court ruled that the government's proroguing of Parliament was unlawful since it served to frustrate Parliament and hamper debate of the Brexit deal uh, acquired, or which was acquired. Okay, so this is a very basic paragraph we could talk about. And the first thing we do is we explain what the common law is. We, we identify in the first sentence that we're going to be talking about the common law. So we're, we're identifying the point. Okay, if I was going to write a second sentence, I would identify, say, statute. So the, so the examiner knows that we're talking about the common law in this paragraph. We then explain what the common law is. It's a body of law which developed through decisions of precedence of the court system. Okay, you can have a different definition or a, you know a more uh, a detailed definition if you want to if you've got time. But just a basic definition is the is is here. Okay, we then explain and analyze why. Okay, why the common law is significant. It's significant since the judiciary has the power to interpret decisions of other institutions such as government and or parliament. Okay. And this has constitutional significance. Okay, and so we've done the explaining and the analysing uh, as to why it's significant. So the examiner knows that we know what it is. Okay, and the the examiner knows um, why we think it is significant. Now, what we're going to do for the rest of the paragraph, effectively, is to give examples to to support my point. I give two prominent examples in support of my point. I give the example of the 2017 Supreme Court uh, Miller One case, where the government, uh, where the Supreme Court ruled that the government doesn't have the authority to just unilaterally trigger Article 50 without the consent of Parliament, and then I give another example of uh, that shows its significance by talking about the 2019 Miller Two case, where the Supreme Court ruled that the government's program of Parliament was unlawful and it, you know, frustrated Parliament to have a debate, etc., etc., etc. Now. You don't have to use these exact these two examples. You could even use three examples if you've got time. You could even just use one example, or you could do more uh, explanations as well. So what we have here is a very good um, example of the of the points that we need to make. If we go back here, so remember we need three sources. Okay, well, I've just given an example of one. We need to explain what they are. We need to give examples that we've done, and then we've also need to analyze their significance. 
And so if we go back to our mark scheme, what I've done is I've demonstrated that I have knowledge of the particular issue. I not only know what it is, I've used political vocabulary as well, you know, things like uh, judiciary, court system, parliament, <laughs> all these uh, key terms, okay? I've also given an explanation and used supporting appropriate examples. I've not talked about um, conventions, for example. I've talked about actual common law cases. And I've made, um, and, and I've, um, made it in a structured, coherent manner, okay? Now, all you would have to do in this scenario is to is to effectively duplicate this three times and then talk one about, say, conventions, one about statute law, or one about authoritative works. And if you wanted to be really, really risky, you could talk about the possible relationship between the UK Constitution and EU law, even though we've left. You could talk about the particular legal um, complications there, although I wouldn't recommend doing that. So that's how we're going to be structuring nine mark questions. And I'm going to go through some nine mark questions. I was thinking about going through them in the form of uh, maybe doing it as like a sort of a live a live stream kind of thing where I will go through and start answering questions and interact with, with, with everybody uh, and talk about how we might answer questions. But if not that, I'll just make, you know, normal videos ex do, going through and giving examples of some um, good nine mark questions. So in the next video, we're going to talk about extract questions, and we're going to go into a lot more detail about that and talk specifically about AO3. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video, which will be, again, on extract questions.